Welcome to a discussion about seals for rotating equipment. My name is Joe Parker. I'm the product director for FlowServe Seals, and I've been working in the seal industry for 29 years. Over my career and since the introduction of seals, protecting people and the environment is a principal goal of seals. Today, there's extra social attention to the environment, greenhouse gases and energy reduction, and that's all good. It aligns perfectly with what FlowServe has been doing with innovating and raising the bar on sealing performance for all kinds of applications. This presentation walks through some of the fundamentals of seals and seal support systems to give some perspective on establishing goals of your seal application. Let's start with a little problem scope. Moving fluid around can be easy. There are many rudimentary ways to move fluid around. As volume requirements have increased and endless labor supply has decreased, technology has stepped in to improve efficiencies and move fluids around that are inherently more challenging. Safety, reliability, energy footprint, and delivering the right fluid conditions still matter, and greater skill is required to achieve all goals. For example, today there's a lot of discussion about a future hydrogen economy and the technology required to move hydrogen around takes the highest level of skill. Not every application is as glamorous and complex as hydrogen, but each should still pay attention to achieving energy and environmental goals. Winning the energy game takes teamwork of every application doing their best. Fluid movement is enabled by the transfer of energy into the fluid. Rotating equipment are commonly used to transfer energy from a driver to the fluid. Pumps spin an impeller to pump liquids. Compressors spin a turbine wheel to compress gases. Mixers spin a paddle to mix liquids and solids. Similarly, blowers blow, reactors cause reactions, centrifuges centrifuge, blenders blend. It's a long list, and the common theme is something rotates to put energy into a fluid. The most versatile and popular way to drive rotating equipment is with a motor located outside the pressure boundary of the equipment. A shaft connects the motor to the spinning device and passes through the pressure boundary. Motor-driven equipment are well established in process industries with excellent efficiencies, the highest power and torque rating, capability over a wide range of operating conditions, and decent tolerance to process upsets. With shaft to support bearings outside the process, the maintenance of motor-driven equipment is straightforward. Finally, there are sealing options at the pressure boundary, but before I get into more seal details, I want to mention there are many decisions to be made along this equipment selection journey, even before seals are discussed. Does the equipment accomplish the fluid movement goals? Does it accomplish energy, water use, and reliability goals? When the equipment goals are established, we can determine how best to approach sealing the pressure boundary. Now that we've decided to punch a hole in the equipment's pressure boundary and shove a shaft through it, we need a strategy to seal the space between and restore boundary integrity. The first question to answer is, how much leakage is allowed? I know you're probably thinking a seal's job is to seal, so just do your job. The reality is that seals are controlled leakage devices. With pressure differential across the seal, some leakage is generally inevitable. What is the process fluid and can any of it, liquid or vapor, escape to the environment? If the fluid is harmless and the service is simple, a little leakage might not be a problem. For example, low duty water supply services may have no visible leakage and very low risk. Flashing light hydrocarbon services, however, such as propane and ethane, should be much more carefully controlled, yet attaining zero emissions is completely achievable. Now factor in all the other operating conditions, including pressure, temperature, speed, size, solids content, viscosity, vapor pressure margin, volatility, and many others. We really need to work through maintaining boundary integrity and leakage allowance. What are your reliability goals? How does the equipment operate and what are the maintenance opportunities to ensure performance between shutdowns? Next, consider environmental factors, energy consumption, and water burden. Achieving a sustainable boundary integrity at the ceiling location takes a clear understanding of many factors. 
With all the challenges facing rotating equipment's pressure boundary, mechanical seals have truly proven their ability to seal all kinds of rotating equipment and elevate reliability levels beyond equipment shutdown or turnarounds. Mechanical seals are a mature technology fully capable of achieving zero emissions performance. FlowServe in particular is continuously improving designs and capabilities with accurate modeling and predictive monitoring. Mechanical seals have several process containment strategies and support system approaches for common to specialized requirements. Finally, mechanical seals applied with compliance to industry standards such as API 682, API 692, DIN, ASME, NSF, and various industry-specific global standards are fully expected to achieve very high reliability goals. Considering the variety of rotating equipment and range of application conditions, there's not just one mechanical seal that serves all purposes. A seal designed for aggressive slurry services, where abrasion and erosion attack the seal elements, is different than one for light hydrocarbons where vapor pressure margin and flashing are the primary concern. A low-duty water pump seal with elastomer gaskets would be out of place in a high-temperature hydrocarbon service or molten salt where elastomer gaskets melt. Likewise, you wouldn't put a seal for molten salt on a water pump due to design overkill and excessive cost. Mixing equipment typically has higher runout, so the seal must tolerate such movement. Top entry mixers need vapor sealing. Bottom entry mixers have the seal fully immersed in liquid that might turn into powder. And side entry mixers could seal, see a combination of everything. Split seals offer the convenience of installation simplicity, but should only be used in non-hazardous fluids, preferably water, because leakage is a little more expected. Seals for compressors are some of the most complicated due to high speed and high pressure gas sealing requirements. There are many more types of mechanical seals and equipment, so this selection is just a taste of the range. With the daunting variety of equipment and operating conditions, how do you figure out which mechanical seal is best? Start by asking questions about the application. What is the pressure, temperature, and fluid? High pressure typically uses pusher seals, while high temperature uses metal bellow seals. What amount of solids and type of solids are expected? Clean fluids have many design options, but abrasive solids will point towards pusher or elastomer spring designs. Balanced or unbalanced seals depend on the pressure. Flexible stator or flexible rotor is determined by the speed and runout. Wet, dry, or multi-phase fluid state will contribute to the seal face boundary technology used. Chemical compatibility will drive the materials of construction and pusher or bellows decision. Leakage expectations or leakage mitigation plan will be resolved with single, dual, or maybe triple seal arrangement. If zero leakage is essential, a pressurized dual seal is the best approach. Also consider the impact of combinations of conditions. For example, water might be considered easy, but boiling water on the seal faces requires a higher level of care. It's nice to throw a seal into service without any additional consideration, and I can confidently say there are plenty of examples. Meanwhile, piping plans exist to improve the mechanical seal environment by removing heat, reducing fluid temperature, changing the seal pressure, increasing the vapor pressure margin, and cleaning the process fluid. These are all improvements for the inboard seal or single seal. Dual pressurized sealed piping plans provide an artificial and optimum seal environment that achieves zero process emissions. Other dual seal plans provide leakage containment and mitigation. API 682 captures industry's best recommendations for piping plans with schematics of key components. Full knowledge of the application conditions and equipment details are instrumental in determining the right piping plan that will not only achieve reliability goals, but also energy savings, water savings, and emissions reduction. Piping plans are built with various components to complete a seal support system. Component selections are sized for the application conditions, but there are still some decisions to be made based on preferences. For example, if cooling water is not desirable, choose a finned pipe cooler. If maintaining a reservoir is troublesome, try an autofiller. If gas pressure is inconsistent, add a gas booster. 
Some industry standards also come into play, so make sure your application truly needs to follow API 682, PED, CRN, ASME, and others. Include only components and instrumentation in your piping plan that help achieve your goals. I've mentioned the need for setting goals a few times so far because it's important. Aligning ceiling goals with plant operations in context of the rotating equipment will provide the best opportunity for success. I'd like to illustrate this point with an example. A few years ago, I was asked to troubleshoot a gas seal installation on a high-speed mixer. The facility selected a lift-off pressurized gas seal so they could achieve zero emissions, run longer than the previous contacting seals, save energy by converting from a wet seal to a dry seal, eliminate cooling water, and simplify maintenance requirements. The seal seals would run great for a while, but they weren't achieving long life. I went to the facility and they had taken the seals apart on a bench where I could quickly see our non-contacting seals had instead been contacting. Behind me in the facility, several of these high-speed mixers were running. And while I was studying the damaged seals, one of the seals on the high-speed mixer started making a terrible squealing sound. Looking at the mixer, it was no longer spinning at 1500 RPM, but I could count the revolutions at 15 RPM. The high-speed mixer had a low-speed phase as part of the operational process, and this particular gas seal wasn't suited for such low speeds. Had we known about the 1% speed phase, we would have designed for it, and that's what we ended up doing to make the seals able to achieve their goals. Who is to blame? Well, that's not the point. The point is to gather all of the information about an application in order to make the best application decisions. One final point about goals, particularly in new projects, are the goals of the EPC, the engineering contractor, the OEM, perhaps multiple OEMs, and the facility fully aligned? If not, it's the facility operators who will get stuck making improvements that perhaps could have been avoided up front with a few more questions. Wrapping up, I want to come back to the pump skid I showed earlier. Is fluid movement easy? Once everything is known and established, fluid movement can seem easy in the end. Mechanical seals weren't invented overnight, but they're out there every day doing their namesake job. I've talked a lot about applications and conditions, not to scare or overwhelm, but to show some of the considerations that must be considered. Knowledge attained at each application builds skills and understanding for the next application. Plan for success, or even piping plan for success, and get, this, get the right system in place to help save energy and water. Establish goals, get alignment with all parties, and don't forget to include your FlowServe seal partner for advice and local expertise for your rotating equipment needs. Please check out flowserve.com for more information. Thank you.